Imagine the scenario, you're stood in a packed elevator with five other people with enough personal space between all of you. But surprisingly, no one is on their phone. It seems everyone is angling for a conversation, but no one knows where to begin. Some people grab the handrail, one man tilts his head back and starts busy in his eyes by studying the architecture of the elevator, and you catch a glimpse of the beautiful woman in front of you as you both smile and look down awkwardly. 20 seconds of blood-curdling awkward silence goes by until the man who's studying the architecture of the elevator tilts his head back and in a tone of light-hearted humour says, I wonder why they put mirrors in elevators. To which everyone can breathe a sigh of relief. Oh, thank God. Someone has started the conversation. So for the rest of the 30 second ascent, you chip into a conversation about the inner workings of an elevator, adding opinions about a topic you've never considered before. But who cares? The awkward silence has been lifted. Give that man a medal. Most people want to be spoken to, flirted with, teased, and given the opportunity to escape their dull existence and reverberate in mental chatter. But oftentimes, we have no clue how to start such interactions, or worse yet, we're terrified to do so. So we remain in silence, stare at our phones, and we're the first ones to frantically press the open button of the lift. And it's because of our reluctance to start a conversation or a social interaction that we cherish those few individuals who take it upon themselves to get the conversation started, whether they are waiting in an elevator, queuing at a local cafe, or just passing us by on the street. Because all it takes is for one person to go first and go positive for us to be invited to reciprocate their social poise back to them. Two years ago, a friend of mine recommended I read an article, but little did I know that article would change my life. Forever. The article was actually a transcript from a speech given by Peter Kaufman, one of the most successful businessmen of our time, and yet most people have never heard of him. He's the CEO of Glen Air, an aerospace company based in California, and he was also the editor for the book Poor Charlie's Almanac. Amongst other things such as leadership, compound interest, and economics, he speaks about mirrored reciprocation. Mirrored recip... <clears throat> mirrored reciprocation where people and animals reflect our behaviour back to us. According to Kaufman, every animal or human interaction is based on this mirrored reciprocation. We got it then. To elaborate, allow me to uh, let you in on a little secret. You know when your dog goes out into the garden and speaks to the neighbour's dog under that gap in the fence? Do you know what they say to each other? Can you believe how easy it is to manipulate humans and get them to do whatever you want them to do? I know, it's a piece of cake, yeah. All you have to do is greet them when they come home from work with the most unconditional showering of love and attention that they've ever received in their life. And you only have to do it for 15 seconds and then you can spend the rest of the evening doing whatever you want. Dogs are masters at mirrored reciprocation. But back to the world of humans. How often do you want to be listened to? How often do you want to be respected? How often do you want meaning, satisfaction and fulfillment in your life in the sense that you matter? You likely answered all of the questions with often. Now consider how the dog owner feels whenever they return from work and they're greeted by their dog. Do you think that woman or man feels like they've been paid attention to and listened to and respected? Do you think she's getting meaning, satisfaction and fulfillment? Do you think she matters to this dog? And do you think she thinks her dog loves her? And what does the dog get in return? Everything. Don't worry, me and my boy Kaufman, we're not recommending that you act like a dog for the rest of your life. What we are suggesting is if you want to be cared for, respected and loved in your life, you have to forget about what you want and focus on giving other people the feeling of being cared for, loved and respected. Because by the law of mirrored reciprocal... Why did I put this word so many times in the script? Because by the law of mirrored reciprocation, you get what you give. Again, you must take responsibility for going first, going positive, and being constant in doing it. But most of us don't. Why? Because out of the 98% of people who reciprocate our positive energy back to us, there's 2% of people who shoo us away. And we're terrified of that 2%. But as Kaufman points out, this is why bars are full of people at 2am, drowning their sorrows, knocking down these drinks. When's the world gonna give me something, man? When am I gonna get mine? Well, what did you ever do? Did you ever get up in the morning and smile at the world? No, you either did nothing or you scowled and hissed at the world. You're getting back exactly what you would expect to get back if you understood how the world really works. So whether it be an attractive person across the bar, your university crush, or simply a fellow human being waiting in a queue in your local cafe. Here's a quick tip on how to start the interaction with them. Give them something to solve. Step one, notice something in the environment. 
Two, bring it to their attention. Three, discuss it. For example, let's say you are in an elevator and you've just come in from outside and it's very sunny outside. Use the oldest trick in the book and just say, cool, it's warm today, isn't it? Yeah, it is warm actually. Where are you off to today? Boom, you're in. Convo has been started, you're off to the races. Whatever you say after that is your, your responsibility, not mine. And then once you've got your reps in using normal things like the weather or smell, get wacky, get creative. I once started an interaction like this with a beautiful young woman in a bar. We were stood there, it was very busy. I explained this in the shorts, maybe you've seen it. She was stood to my left and I really wanted to talk to her, but I couldn't tell whether the bartender in front of me serving everyone was wearing a shirt with octopus or jellyfish on it. So I thought, give her something to solve. Excuse me, I leant in. See that bartender in front of us? Are they jellyfish or octopus on his shirt? She loved it. And we had a brilliant interaction, spoke for about five or 10 minutes and then carried on with our evening. Suddenly we weren't just two bored strangers awkwardly waiting in a queue, but we were two amigos discussing the inner workings of a bartender's shirt as to whether he was wearing octopuses or jellyfish on it. So to this day, I never found out, but yeah. Go first, go positive and be constant in doing it. Mirrored reciprocation. <laughs> oh, uh, you're still here. Quote of the week. Those who see all creatures in themselves and themselves in all creatures know no fear. This was from the newsletter. Feel free to join if you want. It's free. Link in the description and uh, victory sweep. Adios muchachos.